today we're going to look at the Olight Marauder 2 super bright 14,000 lumen flashlight. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at this Olight Marauder 2. This is a flood and spotlight uh, torch or flashlight, whatever you want to call it. It is 14,000 lumens, which is pretty impressive. So, let's get it out. It's got the usual kind of Olight, nice fancy box. I have had it once already out, but uh, kind of just a sneak peek. Get you a basic quick start guide there. We've got the protective film on the lens and I think we've got, yeah, there's some protective stuff on the uh, switch button. There we go. And there it is. Pretty impressive. <laughs> this thing is heavy. Right, we'll go into that in a sec. We'll uh, have a look at what we've got. Instructions. Lanyard. We've got the plug. This is USB-C to USB-C. It does not use the uh, magnet system. It's the rest of that charger. Got the two prongs on there already. And that appears to be it. Okay, let's have a little look at this thing. It is impressive, it is weighty. It's for very specific uses. It is very bright. Um, if you can hear a chainsaw in the background, ignore it. <laughs> Just in the woods here today. So yeah, look at the size of that. <laughs> now this is marketed, like I said, as a floodlight and a spotlight, super bright. Um, it also has the function, if you swivel this, like the Stargate, of using it as a power bank. So you've got USB-C there, and obviously the cable is USB-C to USB-C. So this is a 54 watt hour rechargeable power bank. I had to check that, <laughs> which is quite substantial. So yeah, dual purpose. Um, it's a lanyard hole here, which just kind of flicks out, which is quite nice. So it's nice, I'm guessing silicon rubberized type grip, knurling and everything around the outsides. Nice grip on the bottom there for that aperture to get to that charging port, which also protects it. This is um, droppable one meter and IPX8 waterproof, which is kind of what you'd expect with any of these O-lights now. Now it's a bit different. You've got the switch here, which is to toggle between floodlight and spotlight. And you've got this dial, which you can turn. You can see the indicators there in blue lights. Um, you've got your battery charge on one side. You've got your current power output on the other side. And in the middle, you'll have your charging light which will be green or red or you know whatever depending so a little bit different from usual on the lowest setting you get uh, up to 59 hours of use uh, there's a strobe and um, yeah there's uh, seven different levels from 200 lumens all the way up to the um, 14,000 lumens um, I won't go through all of them as in you know in detail I'll just put them on the screen and you can see what all of them are, so basically increments between 200 lumens and 14,000. The battery itself is pretty big, so that's 50 watt watt hours. That takes two and a half hours to charge from the mains, which isn't too bad at all actually. And it does have cooling features. Um, I was expecting this to get super hot. I wanted to do one of them kind of frying an egg on a torch type videos, but that's not going to happen with this. Plus you do have a proximity sensor in here. Um, which will dim it down and stop you from burning yourself as well. So a lot of impressive features on there. These are the cooling fins here. And one reason I've got this now is because you've got the Black Friday sale, which I think will be starting on the day I'll put this video out and I'll put all the links below. Um, you'll be able to pick this up for a bargain. <laughs> the Olight sales are the time to buy, they really are. Uh, it's kind of like the DFS <laughs> over here, the DFS sales. Um, the other thing being peace of mind, five-year warranty with all of these, sort of a no-quibble thing. 
Now in a moment we'll look at this impressive torch when the um, sun goes down. I'll also throw in some footage um, from elsewhere as well, just trying it out because I'm in a closed in woodland here. It's only so much you can do, so I'll go somewhere a bit more open with it and chuck that footage in as well. But as a, a brief mention, they've got a few other new products. They sent these along as well for me to have a look at. The i5T EOS. I'll bring you in. This is a camo EDC torch. So it's a nice kind of multi-function belt clip which is removable, towel, light switch. I've still got the uh, battery jammer thing in there. So there you go. These are 300 lumens. They've got that anti-slip knurling on them as well. 20 hours maximum use. 60 meter throw, double A battery, so you can swap that out easily. And it's got that 1.5 meter drop and um, IPX8 waterproof. So it's a great all rounder, keeping your pocket EDC type torch or keeping the drawer or keeping the truck, that sort of thing. And it's got this pretty nice pattern. It's not your usual camo. And the other one, which is the i5 UV EOS. Very similar specs, um, 300 lumens, AA battery, 1.5 meter drop, waterproof, all of that stuff. This real snazzy design, I actually quite like it. And if I take off the towel here, get that battery jammer out. Difference in this, uh, you're not really gonna be able to see that. This is a UV light. Um, so yeah, very specific uses. Um, one time I've used a UV light was um, showing you guys the scorpions um, on Sheppey here in Kent. Uh, they obviously glow up. Um, I'll shove in some footage so you can get an idea of that. But yeah, uh, I'm sure if you're securities, um, cleaning services, all kinds of use for a UV light. Um, nice and light, EDCable, 63 grams. Um, yeah, two nice little lights just to consider. They'll be in the uh, sale as well. Okay, just for a bit of a comparison here, um, this light that is on now is my brightest light, which is my panel light for filming, and it's on its top brightness right now. Um, I'll turn that off, so you can see it is pitch black. Right, so this, hang on, this is on the bottom mode. Second. We are third here. This is on flood, by the way. Fourth. It's really getting bright now. Fifth. My goodness. It's like daylight in here. I believe that's sixth. Like you could do a concert or something with this. <laughs> and... Hang on. I've not looked at the instructions, so bear with me. I think this is turbo. Amazing. <laughs> right, so I'm going to turn it right down. And I'm going to flick a switch. And you can see we've got a spotlight here. And I can put that. Skipped and gone to a two here. Four. We put it right up, and I can't go far enough here to really show it. <laughs> uh, I could show you some treetops. 
Okay, here we've got some treetops here. This is a big oak tree pointing right up here, which isn't really a good test. So they go down to a bit of a more open area. We'll get a couple more shots and then we'll uh, cut to uh, another night where I go down by the river. Right, I'm on full zoom here and you can't see anything. You're a bit zoomed in um, and this panel light's not going to do much that is currently on, by the way. So what I'm going to do... Right, we're not at full yet. I'll just stick it right on full. And right down there, I don't know what that is, 100 metres probably. Further than that, down to the bottom. You can see a stump right down there. It's remarkably bright. And if I flick it... <laughs> My word, I don't think the camera does it justice. I haven't even bothered to lock the camera. I think you get a pretty clear impression of this light without even bothering. Right, I'm going to stop for tonight and the next footage you'll see is me down by the river, shutting it across the river. Right, so I'm at my new location now. I'm down on the foreshore of the River Thames on the wider section as we go down towards the estuary. Um, we've got Darford Bridge there and there's one of them uh, I don't know what they are, man-made islands. They're not jetties, but they have like lights on that the ships have to go between. Um, must be on the limit of this uh, torch. Uh, I'm not quite sure really. I'm going to say actually pretty more like 300 metres. And then there's a uh, container ship of some sort, maybe a ferry over the other side of the river. So that's a lot further as well. Um, if I can work out the distances, I'll put it on screen. But pretty confident the uh, spotlight on this torch is going to do it. I'm going to change over to my zoom lens so it's easier to work out what's going on here. So this is a spur of land that's just by that point which I will now put the camera at. Okay, we're on the stern of this boat here, so I'm just going to see what I can do. And you can see that light it up, just about. That's the other side of the river. This is where I am, the zoom lens is on as wide as it will go at the moment. I'm going to try and hit them trees. They are a long, long way away. So they're not lighting. Um, but Jesus, that is bright. Oh, no, it is catching them. Then one's there. It is catching them. That's got to be over the limit of this for sure. I thought there was going to be better places to test this down here. I'm going to walk along a bit and see what I can find. I'm right on the end of a uh, pathway to the river here, which is quite long, so I'm just going to whack this on. Right, we're up on full here, and I can see a good ways down here, just on the floodlight. So I'm going to put it on. My goodness, I'm going to zoom in for you. That is a good ways down there. It's a very long alleyway. <laughs> right guys, I'm back home now. Um, just to run over a bit of a conclusion here. I thought one thing I did want to test before the end of this video is this is sold as a power bank as well. So it's uh, worth checking that out. And yeah, my phone is fully charged, but it is showing as charging or powered. Um, don't have to turn the torch on or power anything on to get that going. So that works just fine. So if you are taking this out and about, leaving it in a truck or something, good dual purpose there, knowing you have that power. Um, you can use the included cable, that's quite a long one to keep with you, you'd probably keep this at home and have maybe like a portable one. 
Um, things I've noticed about this whilst using it. Obviously, super bright, super over the top for something like camping, <laughs> unless you just want them kind of bragging rights of having the brightest torch in camp. Um, this is like search and rescue, maybe hunting, um, stalking, um, I don't know, but you're going to know if this is something you, you are in the market for or need for your job, your work, your hobby. Um, maybe you do big events and you look at ceilings or building work, you know, there's lots of reasons for this, but kind of camping, hiking is probably not it in all honesty. I do like the fact that you have to spin to unlock it before turning it on. Um, it's a good kind of lock system, it's something that's not going to accidentally happen in a pack or, or something like that. Um, instantly if it does turn on, uh, you've got that proximity um, detection for if it is on bright where it is going to heat up a bit. Um, I used it the other night going down to the river, quite a long walk and that, uh, had it on a lot of that time. I didn't notice any excess heat. I've had much smaller torches, which I guess don't disperse the heat so well, that um, heat up a lot more. In fact, some of them are very hot to the touch, almost like they'd burn you. But this one, you don't really have any of them problems. The only real downside, I guess, is just, you know, as a result of what it is and, and the field that it kind of fits into, it's quite heavy. I noticed that walking back, so, I don't know, a couple of kilometres, it's quite heavy in the hand. Um, but I'm guessing you're not going to be using it for them extended periods. Something else I didn't mention is you do have different memory modes and stuff, the way it remembers different modes that you're set on and all of that. Not something you really need to know in a review, only like in general usage, and you're going to have the instructions if you do have one of these. So for its use, it, it fits that purpose very well. If you need something super bright and that can floodlight and uh, spotlight, or either of them, it's going to do the job pretty well. I'll put all the links and details below. Um, this video will go up when the Black Friday sale starts, so you know that's the time if you're after a low light. Any low light doesn't have to be this. That's the time to buy one, basically. As always, I take no payment from the companies that send review units. That's in order to stay impartial. The links below are tracked, but that's for their own reasons, nothing to do with me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Until next time, stay safe. Thank you.